Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, look who I got with me. Well, hello, Kitty. Come on in. I uh, ran into Chester on the street, Matt. He insisted I come along with him. Well, I'm glad he did. Uh, I mailed them letters and things to the depot, Mr. Dillon. No, good, good, Chester. And I took that circular over to Mr. Hightower. He'll print some up in a couple of days. Oh, uh-huh. good. That's all you want me to do, ain't it? Hey, yeah, 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 that's all. Ain't nothing else you need. I mean, not right now. No. No, nothing else. Mm-hmm. Everything's pretty well took care of, ain't it? Yeah, everything's fine. Fine, Chester, yeah. Mm-hmm. Except uh, for that buzzing in your head. My head? <laughs> Come on, what is it, Chester? Just speak it right out. Uh, well, thing is, I run into this friend of mine a few minutes ago. I ain't seen him in years. I, I knowed him a long time ago, way back in the army. Oh. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. Uh, well, see, he's stationed out at Fort Dodge, right here, only five miles away. My, <laughs> just imagine that. Chester, I, I got an idea. Uh, yes, sir? Look, why don't you ride out and see your friend, huh? Now, you can stay a couple of days if you want. There's nothing for you to do around here. Well, you think that'd be a good idea? <laughs> Well, it, it's my idea, isn't it? it? Yes, it sure is. Well, I better get going then. No use wasting time, is it? Bye, Chester. Uh, bye, Miss Kitty. I- I'll be back in a day or two, Mr. Jones. Yeah, well, you have a good time, Chester. And uh, leave the door open. It's awful hot in here. Yes, huh? sir, I will. Goodbye. <laughs> so that's why he wanted you here, huh? Oh, I guess he thought it might help. But he forgot to mention something. No, but... what's that? Uh, this dear old friend of his has got a pretty interesting job in the Army. Yeah, is that so? Yeah. He's a mess sergeant. A mess sergeant? Yeah. Well, after a couple of days of that, I'll have to go after Chester with a wagon. You may never see him again. Yeah. Marshal Dillon? Ah, oh, come on in, son. I'm looking for Doc. Well, his office is right next door. I've been there. I've been everywhere. Oh, you need him bad? I was sent to fetch him. Somebody sick? My pa told me to bring him out to our place. Well, is it your pa who's sick? He wants the doc bad, Marshal. Well, who is your pa, son? Ben Pitcher. Are you Ben Pitcher's boy? My name's Jerry. Oh, oh Jerry, your pa must be pretty sick if he's sent for a doc. I know. He hates doctors. Don't believe in them. But he wants doc to come, Marshal. He told me I had to find him. Now, I've looked everywhere. Well, there's a back room at the Dodge house, Jerry. Doc sometimes plays a little poker in there. Well, thank you, lady. I'll go look. Uh, if you don't find him there, come back and I'll help you, Jerry. Thanks, Marshal. Oh, and uh, Jerry. Yes, sir. If you do find him, be sure and tell him that I want to see him before he leaves, huh? I'll tell him, Marshal. Ah, that's a surprise. Yeah. I've heard about Ben Pritchard. How he hates doctors. His wife's just as bad. I remember he got cut up in a knife fight here in town sometime back and then threatened to kill Doc if he got anywhere near him. He almost bled to death as a result. 
You know, there's something wrong about this, Kitty. I think I'll ride out there with Doc. Good. I'd sure hate to see anything happen to Doc. Yeah, so would everybody. Except Pitcher. <laughs> It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. Lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. Holiday weekend time is carton time. This big holiday weekend, pick up a couple of cartons of L&M's when you shop. Try L&M, America's best filter tip cigarette. It's sweeping the country. How do you like riding in a buggy, Matt? Make you feel important? Yeah, it sure does, Doc. But the way you drive, I'd feel a lot safer on a horse. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Well, I hope not. <laughs> whoa there, whoa. I don't see anybody around. Well, you expect a sick man to be waiting on the porch for you? Well, I'd expect most anything of Ben Pitcher. Well, the man can change, Doc. Oh, change. Not him. Not Pitcher. I will soon find out. What are you doing here, Marshal? I came along to keep Doc company, Miss Pitcher. Oh. Ma'am? Where's the boy? Now, Jerry said to tell you he'd be along directly. Why didn't he come with you? Well, he said that you gave him a list of stuff to buy while he was in town. Oh, forgot. Oh, we're wasting time. Where's Ben, Mrs. Pitcher? He's out back. He's uh, out back? In the barn. What's he doing in the barn? You ask him, Doc. I don't interfere in my husband's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Is he sick or isn't he? He's in the barn. You go see him. I got work to do. <sighs> that woman could fair drive me crazy, man. <laughs> so maybe that's what happened to Pitcher, Doc. Mm -hmm. Between the two of them, it's a wonder the boys made out at all. Yeah, Jerry seems okay. If they have their way, they'll make a spook out of him yet. You know, you're not very charitable, Doc. Oh, charitable. You don't fool me, Matt Dillon. You don't like them any better than I do. I always try to look for the good side in people, Doc. Oh, sure. Hogwash. <laughs> well, pretty good barn he's got here. Yeah. Look, uh, I'll go in first. Huh? What's that? Oh, you, you follow me. Pitcher. Hey, Pitcher. I'm back here. Come on, Doc. Over here in this stall. No, 
I thought it was Doc. He's here, Bishop. What are you doing in there with that cow? I thought you were sick. It ain't me that's sick. Well, who is sick? A cow. What? The cow's got the colic or something. I've done everything I can for her. You mean you had me come all this way, way out here, to doctor a cow? I wouldn't let you doctor no human. I thought there was something wrong about all this. The cow's yes. cow's different. I don't mind so much you working on a cow. Oh, you don't. No, uh, cows are different. Humans can get well by themselves, but cows is helpless. They're kind of pitiful. Uh, listen to her. She's hurting bad, dog. I ought to kick you right in the head, Ben Pritchard. Now don't take it out on me that you doctors don't know nothing. If you're so smart, do something for my cow. Before she dies, dog. Oh, all right. I'll look at it. But you sure don't deserve it, Ben. You ain't doing it for me. You bet I'm not. Now get out of the way and let me in there. Uh, take your time, Doc. I'm in no hurry. What's he doing in there all this time, Marshal? Leave him be, Ben. He'll let us know if he wants any help. How's my cow, Doc? Oh, I guess he's through. Here's your knife, Ben. Did you stick her with it? I did, and she's going to feel a lot better. You can give her all the water she wants, but don't let her eat anything for a day or two. She going to live? I don't know, Ben. If she dies, I ain't going to pay you. I wouldn't take any money from you, anyway. What's wrong with my money? It's not your money. It's you. What do you mean? Hey, Pa, I'm back. I got all the stuff Ma wanted. You'd better, Ruth. Oh, Doc, Marshal. Jerry. Say, Doc, you missed all the excitement. Oh, is that so? Yeah, it happened just after you left. Everybody was running around looking for you. What happened, Jerry? Oh, Mrs. Hill, she was walking down the street, and I guess the sun was too much for her or something. Anyway, she fainted, and she fell against the window right there at the general store, and it cut her arm real bad. Nobody could get it stopped bleeding. Yeah, they couldn't. That's why they were looking for you, Doc. I told them you'd come out here, but they wouldn't believe well, me. Well, what happened to Mrs. Hill, Jerry? She died, Doc. Huh? Just before I left. She died? Did you hear that picture? A woman died. If I'd been there, I could have saved her, but... But she died. Don't talk at me. She died because of you and your rotten, twisted ways. Ah, uh, none of you doctors is any good. You couldn't have done nothing. Oh, no good. Well, I'll show you. No, wait a minute, Doc. You're not. I'll show you. Nobody hits me. But Pa's got a knife. No, Pitcher, put it down. Oh, he oh. cut him. It's her. Here, Doc. I got you. He ripped me with a knife, Matt. Yeah. You hurt bad? Well, it's bleeding. I can see that. You can help me in the house. Now, we, we, we can look at it there. Yeah, sure, Doc. What about Paul? You let me know when he comes to. And I'll come back and knock him out again. It's pretty clean now, Doc. Oh, oh well. Oh, gee, well, that looks better. Yeah, but it's still bleeding now. I don't care for that mess you're making on that bed, Marshal. Go get me another pan of hot water. You ordering me around my own house? You do it! Uh, Matt. All right. Yeah, Doc? I'm not sure, but I... I don't think that knife ruptured anything. Oh, no, well, that's good. But a couple of those veins have to be tied off, and then it's it's got to be sewed up, you see. Oh? Uh, there are needles and thread in my bag. Now, I'd do it myself, but I, I can't reach it easy enough. What? You mean you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you how I'll match you. Well, you, you think I can? <laughs> 
Oh, it's easy. Especially for a gunfighter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I can bleed to death this way. I won't have any trouble, Doc. Here, you hold the cloth on it, huh? I got it. I'll go get your bag. Marshal. Get out of here, pitcher. You hit me awful hard. Did I? He jumped me first. You saw him. I was protecting myself. Pitcher, if Doc doesn't come out of this all right, I'm going to quit being a marshal, and I'm going to come after you as a plain man looking for revenge. You're threatening me. It's wrong of me, but I'm going to kill you, Pitcher. No, no. Get out of here. And stay out of this house. Go on. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. It wasn't easy. And I felt like I had fence posts for fingers. But I finally got Doc sewed up. He'd lost an awful lot of blood, and he passed out before I finished. So all I could do was sit there and watch him. And maybe that was the hardest part. In the morning, however, he seemed better, and he insisted that I take him into Dodge. So I made him a bed in Pitcher's wagon and had Jerry drive the buggy alongside. He was in bad shape by the time we reached town, but I got him into his own bed and then sent for Kitty to help me out. I don't know what I'd have done without her for that next week. Ma. Yeah, Kitty, I'm coming. You know what he wants now? Oh, what? He's tired of drinking plain water. He says if we don't start cutting it with some good corn, he won't drink any more. Well, then let him go thirsty. He won't hold out long. <laughs> no public servant's going to tell me what's good for him. Oh. You send that lawman down for some whiskey. Doc, now we've gone to a lot of trouble to keep you alive. We sure have. Oh, don't you worry about me. I'd get out of bed right now and... Uh... I like being waited on. Now, no, who's that? No, oh, that's a dumb question. Who's that? How do I know? Go look. Doc, I never thought anything could make you any ornerier than you've always been, but getting stabbed, did it? Oh, never mind the gab. Just answer the door. Well, come on in. Oh, what manners. Come on in, I said. Oh, good heavens, man. Well, go ahead, Doc. Fire me. Doc? Doc. Uh, in here. Uh, oh, well, it's Jerry. Yeah, come on in, son. Oh, Doc, Marshal. Now, what are you doing in town, Jerry? I come for Doc. What? And Paul's sick. He's about to die so sick. Oh, now, look, It's Jerry. the truth, Marshal. Paul made me lie last time, but he don't even know I'm here now. He doesn't know you're here. Huh? He's too sick, Doc. It's like he's out of his head. He don't know nothing. What about your ma? Does she know you're here? I didn't tell her. She'd have stopped me. Doc? Jerry, your pa tried to kill Doc the last time, and he's still in bed. Now, he can't go anyplace. Please, Doc. Why should he risk his life for your poor? Wait a minute, Matt. Now, just wait a minute. Here we... uh, I'll come, Jerry. Now, don't be silly. I'm Doc. a doctor, Matt. A man's dying. Doesn't matter what man. I knew you'd come. I knew you you're would. You're crazy, Doc. You'll open that cut riding out there. Besides, you're not strong enough. You'd be taking an awful chance, Jerry. Doc. What? How'd you come to town? I figured you'd need it, so I brought the wagon. I thought so. Well, are you going to help me out, man? All right. I'll help you out, Doc. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. And L&M's got everything. Best filter. Notice the color of the miracle tip. It's white. Pure white to give you the purest and best filter. Best flavor. You get a rich, good-tasting, fully satisfying smoke. And that's what every smoker wants. Best tobaccos. Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light. And mild. Today, buy L&M. 
It's sweeping the country because it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure you have plenty of L&Ms on hand for this big holiday weekend. Yes, today, why don't you get a carton of L&Ms? Because L&Ms got everything. This is it, L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. should let me carry you, Doc. No, no. I'll make it. He's awful weak, ain't he? Yeah, he is. Here, I'll get the door. Come on in. Ma's probably in the bedroom. It's over this way. We know where it is, Jerry. Oh, I forgot. That you, Jerry? It's me, Ma. Where are you been? Doc, what are you doing here? Uh, Jerry came after me, Mrs. Pitcher. We don't want no doctors. Your husband's sick? He's terrible sick. But you can't do him no good. Yeah, I can try. Jerry, I'm going to whoop you. No, Miss Pitcher, no, you're not. Don't you tell me what I'm going to do, Marshall. Look at Doc, Miss Pitcher. You can tell he shouldn't be here at all, but he came. He came to help a man who tried to kill him. And nobody's going to stop him. Now, come on, Doc. Get out of the way, Miss Pitcher. Hmm. Wait a minute, I'll get you a chair, Doc. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now, here you are. Yeah, he... He looks pretty sick. Marshal! Don't oh, want me, Jerry! Now what? She's got a gun, Marshal. Right, told me, I said. I got her, Jerry. I'll kill you. You and Doc both. Give me that. No. There. Now you sit down. Go on. Jerry, you go see if Doc needs any help, huh? Okay, Marshal. You know, Miss Pitcher, you don't deserve Doc being here. You don't deserve it at all. Marshal? Yeah, what? I've been thinking. All night I've been sitting here thinking. Oh? I don't want my husband to die. I can't have him die. Doc's doing everything he can for him, Miss Pitcher. Can he save him? You think he can save him? I don't know. Well, Mrs. Pitcher. How is he, Doc? Well, he's past the worst. I think he'll be a... Can I see him? Can he talk? Yes, but not for long. He needs a lot of rest now. Well, speaking of rest, Doc, you, you look like you could use some, too. Yeah, we're going back to Dodge, man. <laughs> oh, and I'll sleep the whole way. Good. Doc, he wants to talk to you. What is it, Pitcher? More. Ma says you was here all night. I was, yes. She says you saved my life. Well, maybe I helped. Uh, maybe. But what I want to say is that I ain't going to pay you. I didn't ask you to, Pitcher. Pitcher, Doc saved your life. Maybe he did. But I ain't going to pay him. It doesn't matter, but why not? Of course, my cow died. No, for... Pitcher, Matt, I'm going to... Matt, Matt, Don't bother. Come on, let's go, let's go. 
Okay, Doc. Doc? Yes? He means what he says, Doc. I can't change him. It's all right, now. I can't change him, but there's something I gotta say. Yes? I'm proud to have you in my house, Doc. I'm real proud. I can't say no more. I've been paid pretty good. And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&M's and you'll see what I mean. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vivi Janice, and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff. Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio shows. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.